All right, so you're hearing all this hype about how to build AI agents. Well, I'm gonna show you today how to build an AI agent using C Sharp, using the Semantic Kernel and Google's Gemma 3, running locally through Olama. No cloud fees, no API keys, just pure development freedom here. So I've spent a long time doing development. I can tell you this is some of the most exciting stuff that I've seen. This is really cool. It almost seems like magic, but we're moving from AI models that can just chat to AI models that actually do things and can help your business. Now, what I'm gonna show you here is with a chat, but I'm gonna give you some examples and some code base where you can take this and run with your idea and your creation. So the local AI running through Olama means you can build powerful agents that respect your data privacy and run without burning cash on API calls. And that's something that my enterprise clients are absolutely loving right now. So I've got the exact code. It's all for free. I'm going to give it to you right here. We're going to walk it through step by step and talk about how you can build this and get started with your company and your projects. So let's dive in. Welcome to Startup Pack. I'm Spencer Thomason here at Startup Pack. We love to train software developers in our licensed coding boot camps, as well as build custom software solutions for companies. With a decade of executive leadership as a fractional CTO and 25 years in software development, I've mastered transforming tech teams and products. All right. So I've seen the evolution of software over my entire career, and what I'm building today is really amazing, and it seemed like science fiction even just a few years ago. So AI agents that can actually understand goals and accomplish tasks. So the real power isn't in fancy prompt engineering. It's about building AI agents that combine semantic kernels orchestration capabilities with Google's Gemma 3 running locally through Olama. Now, I'm not running this against some crazy, you know, $10,000 computer. This is running under my desk for a machine that I got for 250 bucks off of Facebook Marketplace, right? I'm going to show you exactly how to create an agent that does, doesn't just respond to prompts, but can actually help you do some meaningful stuff. So why an AI agents, right? After years of development on cloud APIs and their hefty bills, running Google Gemma 3 locally through Olama is like finding a secret passage to a video game. Suddenly, you've got unlimited lives. I've watched countless projects get canned because the AI API costs spiral out of control but with this local setup you can develop and test without worrying about your per token pricing and if you want to speed it up throw some bigger hardware at it right it's pretty simple right single cost uh, type of upgrade so local AI means your sensitive business states also stays on your hardware something that makes compliance teams break into spontaneous applause right so the combination of semantic kernel structured reasoning with locally run Gemma 3 gives you enterprise grade AI capabilities without enterprise grade cost this also lowers the bar so that smaller businesses can start to do this right I helped a mid-sized company manufacturing replace something that was like $25,000 a month in the cloud with a solution that can run locally against these agents and you can do it here with just the information that I'm going to give you today so it's super exciting right now before we dive into you, you need to know your development environment. So you got Visual Studio, .NET 8 or .NET 9. I'd recommend going with .NET 9. It's super fast. And consider that your workbench, uh, you know, that you work workbench for crafting digital intelligence, right? You definitely want to install Olama, which is super simple. If you don't know how, check out my previous videos. I've got a whole playlist about DIY AI PCs. This is going to teach you how to use Olama. It's very simple and you can get started right away. Now, after Olama is installed, you're going to pull down Google's Gemma 3 model, and I'm going to show you some of the commands here, but it's just a single command. You can go get it, run and grab a drink, and come back, and you're good to go. Um, now, I've always created a new solution for C-sharps, and I've got a bunch of projects, but this is a really simple one. So we have hundreds of free code samples, so there's going to be a link down below. Make sure you go and download this. It's totally free, free as in free, and you can run with this, right? So Semantic Kernel isn't just another library. It's Microsoft's comprehensive framework for orchestrating AI capabilities into a coherent agent that can reason and act. So the genius of Semantic Kernel is how it allows you to define plugins, collections of functions that your AI can invoke to interact with the world from searching the web to querying databases. So when I first tried building AI agents from scratch, I spent weeks trying to get the plumbing put together, right? But Semantic Kernel gives you that out of the box and it makes it super easy, right? Now the framework provides uh, built-in handshakes between AI reasoning and concrete actions, eliminating the tedious prompts that engineers made, uh, made an early AI development make it feel like communicating with aliens. So one of the most powerful features is the semantic, uh, semantic memory system. Your agent can remember past interactions and learn from them, making it feel uncannily human-like, right? Now, if you connect semantic kernel to Olama and it requires a custom connector, fortunately Microsoft provides a sample that we can adapt with just a few tweaks. The magic happens in the Olama text generation service class that translates semantic kernel's request into the format Olama express, expects and it makes this translator really easy and super fast, lightning fast, right? 
So you um, you know definitely want to mess, mess around with the right parameters, and it's also crucial because you want to get the temperature just right for your logic, right? All right, so let's dive in and get to some code because I know that's what you're all saying is, Spencer, shut up and stop talking, and let's get to some code here. So let me get this shift switched over here, and we will get going on some code. All right, so hopefully you've pulled down this code base here, and so you, I'm going to go show you where you can get this. So these, this link is down in the down in the description down below. So make sure you grab this because this is where you can go and get it. We come with all this, uh, all the instructions here. The great thing is, this is all totally free. You can see this code uh, sample number two hundred forty-four. We give these away for free because we love training software developers here at Startup Pack. So make sure that you pull this down very first because this is going to be the important part for uh, you know for getting rolling here. So once you've got this pulled down, this is the code you've got, and you've also got a great README here to run you through and how to you know pull these and, and make these. Changes to get started uh, for this. Now, you can see that you create the first kernel and you do the create builder, right? We add the scope, and the scope that we're going to add here is the API client, right? So, this is where we're uh, sending it to Olama, right? So, if you've changed your Olama port, which you kind of would have to know what you're doing, by default, this is what the Olama port is. And then we're going to give it the o Olama chat completion service, right? So, this Olama chat completion service is, uh, is set up here, right? So, you've got the constructor where we pass in the client. Um, in this client, uh, we then also are specifying our default model here, right? And this default model then is where, so if you want to change from Olama, or let's say that your machine has more hardware than this machine has, which I would definitely recommend getting a little bit more of a, a better machine, get to at least the 4 billion or, you know, even higher uh, parameters. As high a parameters, the more accuracy you're going to get on this model here, right? But this is where this one's going to be a chat uh, stream. And so this is where it will create the format of the model. You can see we run through and we set the prompt execution settings. We set the kernel cancellation token. And then we're building our string builder here, right? For this is for capturing the stream. We pass in the chat history. So this is how we are actually using this chat, uh, retaining this chat history between chats, right? So that's an important piece that I'm going to show you here because then this, this actually uses this as it's passing through to get this. So let me show you this running here and we can uh, take a look at some of these and uh, let me set some breakpoints here. So we can take a look at these as we run this because that's, that's what real developers do, right? Is run and in, in breakpoints and take a look at this. So let's say, why is the sky blue? Okay. When it comes back, you can see that our chat history right now is blank because we haven't really done anything here, right? So we can see that we don't have a whole lot in here in our chat history. Now, if I run this and I let this guy fly, you can see it comes back and the bot waits for a second and it's calling and then it comes back with us. Now, once it comes back with us, it's going to start to store it into the chat history and you can set, see that this is getting set into the chat history um, as we see this response coming back, right? So we're, we're keeping the chat history here as we create this chat history. So this is some of our built-in classes that make this um, uh, really, um, really slick from uh, some of these classes that we get from Microsoft using this. And so this is, this is really, Microsoft's done a lot of the heavy lifting for us here. So now if I say, what was my previous question? And we run this guy here. Now our chat history has, and, and I'm not really able to see, but you can see now our chat history has a count of four, right? So we've seen this, this has definitely gone up. So let's let this go again. And it says, hey, your previous one was, why was the sky blue, right? So this is pretty slick that the fact that it can actually start to remember between these. Now, even better yet, if I stop this and then I run it again, Oop, I saw my breakpoint in there. Uh, so it looks like it doesn't stop if you are lo if you stop the program, you are going to lose this. So you will want to try to figure out how to retain this. So this becomes an important thing that if you want to be able to retain this model, all, uh, retain your chat history, all you have to do is save this out to some kind of data store. Now, the data store that I've been really liking to use lately is PostgreSQL using JSON. You can take this, serialize it out, and that way you could always be capturing this and feeding it back into the model every single time. So that way, if it stops, because see if we run this again, now so now I say what was my previous question it's now gonna probably know it because it knows my previous question was what was my previous question right um, and so uh, 
I understand. I think it's gotten confused now. Why is the sky blue? So we're going to let that fly. And once this comes back, then we can then start to build on top of that. Okay. Now explain like I am five years old. So see now it simplifies it, right? So it, you know, big box of crayons, it sends all the colors, the rainbow, et cetera, et cetera, right? So you can see that it retained that it knew what my previous question was because it could re relay this back. So it not only knows the, the input, but it knows the output. Now, the beauty to that is you can actually then save this and save it off to another data store so that it could retain it between uh, chat uses. So you can definitely see how powerful this is because the AI models are the most powerful when we can work in the size of the context window. That's one of the biggest pieces to it. So where this code is really, really, really simple and probably overly, overly simplified, at the end of the day, it's this is all the code. So we've got 45 uh, lines in here and another, uh, you know, 120 or so here. So under 200 lines of code and you've got a full working AI agent that you can start to work with and take these um, and start to store this context between uh, between uses. So this becomes really powerful as you want to be able to interact with data and be able to chain data uses together, right? Because this becomes really, really powerful with that. So uh, this is a great example. Hopefully this gives you some help. Um, again, as always, if you need any other help, reach out to us because here at Startup Pack, we love to train software developers in our licensed coding boot camps, but we also love to build custom software solutions for companies. So if your company's struggling or you want to get into building some AI agents for your company, reach out to us. You can hit us up at Startup Pack dot com slash Spencer. If you're interested in the coding boot camps, we've got some great coding boot camps and great opportunities for people who want to continue to learn some of this awesome new technology. So check this information out. Want to become a software developer, but don't want to spend four years in college and rack up massive student loan debts? Think you need technical expertise to get started? Welcome to Startup Pack, a better way to start your software career without student loans and years without income. One on one tutoring is included so you never get stuck and have guidance through the whole process. No technical experience is necessary. Learn at your own pace and in your own space. Startup Pack has worked with local state agencies in your area to make it so that qualifying students can get the program costs covered entirely and students can start earning while they learn. Startup Hacks .net Coding Bootcamp was a game changer for my career. As someone with no prior programming experience, I was initially intimidated by the idea of learning to code. But the instructors at Startup Pack broke down complex concepts into easy to understand lessons and provided hands-on projects that really cemented my understanding. The curriculum was comprehensive and up-to-date and got me ready for my first job. What really set Startup Pack apart was to focus on practical, real-world skills. Thanks to Startup Pack, I landed my dream job as a .NET developer within weeks of graduating. I went from knowing nothing about code to building professional grade web applications in just a few intense months. If you're looking to break into .NET development or level up your coding skills, I cannot recommend Startup Pack enough. Complete our three month coding bootcamp, gain hands on experience, and land a paid internship. With two years of experience, on average, our graduates are making over $80,000 per year. The three month program includes technologies from Microsoft, Google, and Facebook. No debt, just a quick path to earning. Check out startuphack.com to code your future and start today.